Hey, everybody, this is Birch. Um, well, let's. Uh, so, I am a culprit at times of taking comic panels and then changing the words inside the panel. Now, in in my defense, uh, although I don't know why I'm saying defense, because I think it's good fun, and I'll stand by that because it is. You don't have to make it weird and, and gross and all the other kind of stuff. You could just it could be just fun. We used to do this. This is actually a tried and true tradition for a long period of time where. This would be something that people did, and it was funny. Um, But it's changed in light of the culture wars, because now if you say something, and if somebody might in some ways get offended by something that was said, then it's not just that you told a bad joke or a dumb joke or, you know, all the rest, but that you're actually evil, trying to destroy the very livelihood of the creator's uh, entire well-being. And uh, and, and really, I'm not exaggerating that kind of hype. That's, That's where it's gone. Um, so I've done this before, and I always thought it was a good bit to take a comic panel and then insert into the words things a creator was saying online. And in fairness, when I first started doing this, um, it was a way for me to go, hey, you know, you believe you're the good guy, and yet if you put your words into Captain America's mouth, you sound like a lunatic. And uh, I very famously did this for um, Chuck Winding um, and EVS and a couple others. And it's like, this This stuff doesn't age well when you put it into the panel like this. Um, and it's 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 fine. It, it's By the way, this wasn't meant to be a giant moral statement. It was a funny statement. That was the idea. And to me, it was super funny if you had somebody who is a, say, writer of Superman um, saying things like, eat shit, you boot-licking Nazi. And then you put that into Captain America's mouth, and it's like, holy shit, Captain America's hardcore. Um, so I, I always thought there was some comedy there and maybe a lesson, but mostly just comedy. That was kind of what I did. And uh, as many of you know, if you've been listening to this channel for you know a while, this has irritated people, but none more than David Peppos, who completely lost his effing mind over one of these panels and just went to the most uh, uh, cringe level of insults. Keep your name out of my mouth, you know, a, a level of, of stuff. Uh, that you don't hear grown adults say very often. But anyway, he he lost his mind and lost uh, any respect I might have had for him in the process. Um, I, I honestly, it's one of those weird things. When uh, I go into the sh- shop and I look at stuff and I see that Punisher title, I see his name on it now, I'm instantly like, this guy is a clown. That I mean, you know, a lot of us feel that way. And it's it's weird, the kind of stuff that, that gets you into that headspace. But now that's how I think about him, which is a shame because, uh, you know, didn't really need to go there, but anyway, that was an example of um, um, an example of taking. In this case, not him, but uh, one of his uh, his peers, somebody he often likes and promotes, and putting it in there, which I find just bizarre. But but regardless, this isn't about him. Um, recently, uh, Chuck Dixon uh, posted a panel of uh, Nightwing talking to John Kent, um, and it was from a, a, a recent issue, I think, of Nightwing or Titans. I, it was from a recent issue. And um, it was lettered very well. I don't know who did it. it was not me, uh, but it was lettered quite well. And uh, he he basically um, uh, the the panel was um, well. I mean, I'll, I'll read it to you. It it, it was uh, Nightwing is, is Nightwing's talking to John Kent, and John Kent uh, is saying um, in the original panel, "I'll look for him." And uh, Nightwing, who's kind of looking thoughtful, says, you're resourceful and powerful, but this is Gotham. Your dad has often thought he could operate here. It's never worked out. Okay. The edited panel had John Kent saying, so I'm bi. How about you? Is John Kent bi, by the way? I, I, mean, I feel like in comics, if they have John Kent dating a woman, um, you're at this point now, you're going to get a bunch of people angry. Even if he, he states he's bi. If they, if they ever do have him dating a woman, uh, they're going to have to, he's going to continuously have to remind people that at one point he dated a man. Otherwise, people are going to play your race shirt and everything else. I, I, I may be wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but that's that's where I think that goes. Anyway, Nightwing says, I'm, hmm, I guess I've only ever dated women, but I mean, look at me. Seriously, look at me. I'm gorgeous. I'm an absolute snack. That's S-N-A-C-C. I've got to be at least a little queer. Now, this was an edited panel. And uh, some people said it to me, going, is this real? I'm like, no, nah, I don't. Well, I, I, I paused for a moment, and I want to explain why I paused. The, the, the dialogue is goofy, and the art doesn't really line up with it very well. Um, but uh, 
it's the use, it, weirdly enough, it's the use of the word snack. I'm an absolute snack. And why that was the thing that gave me pause is because if you're reading Fire and Ice and you're reading some of the current DC titles, they will often go for references that just are thoroughly out of place. You know, I think when Fire and Ice went for an Eminem reference um, and not a current one, like a, a like really goofball references. So it was that snack was like, this could be real. I had that that moment, and uh, then I sent it to a couple of people. Like, no, god damn it, here's the comic it's from. Anyway, but uh, that word, the use of the word snack, got me. <laughs> I gotta admit that got me. It was like the rest of it. even John Kent signed by. How about you? Now that's they wouldn't write that in a comic like that. Um, they they wouldn't it wouldn't come across. Um, but the the snack that's what got me. Anyway, um. So he posted this, Chuck Dixon posted it. It was unclear if Dixon knew it was an edit or not. My guess is he knew it was an edit. Um, but anyway, um, he posted it. A lot of people gave it some attention. And more importantly, people flipped out that he would dare post such a thing. And I don't know if it's because it was Chuck Dixon, who was a writer who once wrote Night Ring. Um, but uh, anyway, he was, he, people really took offense to him doing this. It was really like over the top bad that he did it. Uh, somebody like me, it's just a little bad. But him, super bad. Uh, so I'll, I'll, you know, I'll say again, I think it's healthy when inside of comics, you could do stuff like this. Post panels, make jokes, you know, crack jokes at comics. It's healthy. That is, you know, going on, you know, that, People flipping out on social media is unhealthy. YouTube reaction videos that go on and on and on, unhealthy. I think if it's 2024 and you are doing a video about, uh, you know, America Chavez, the comic book, and, uh, you know, that, 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 that writer, it's unhealthy in 2024 because it's been a while, right? Unless it's like YouTube classic and you're, you know, trying to get that nostalgia dollars for going back and, and going after Gabby Rivera or Cena Grace for Iceman. You know, the time has passed. Um, but being able to make fun of, of comics and also appreciate them, it's a balance. I'm not saying it's 100% make fun. I'm just saying being lighthearted with some of this stuff is not bad. It's, it's good. Because lighthearted and jokes means interest. And interest means sales. And so I think this is all healthy if the balance is, is right. Um, so I, anyway, I think it's okay. But man, people were pissed. And it was, you are, you know, white national. I mean, they went for all the racist stuff, even though there's, there's nothing, you know, clearly you're a bigot. This is dangerous. This is, uh, this should be illegal. You're, you know, DC should sue you all like, like over the top level of anger at Dixon uh, over posting this panel. Which, by the way, as an aside, if you feel you are being bullied or some, you know, what's the right thing to do? Largely ignore it. I know that doesn't feel good. And I know in movies, you know, they often say, I don't, don't ignore the bully. Stand up to them and throw some punches and, you know, find a way to zing them back and all the rest. That's, that's how it works in movies. But most of the, this kind of stuff feeds off of attention. If you give it attention, if you give it oxygen, there will be more. So throwing an absolute spaz fit over Dixon doing this guarantees more people will do this. Guarantees. If your goal is to not have people do this, then you are failing massively by like this police should come. There's one person like this is something that should be taken to court. Some police should handcuff Dixon from like what? What what are you like seriously? That is, that is insanity. And also, it's just plain wrong. It's better, again, if we can, you know, be lighthearted about this stuff, make jokes about this stuff, encourage participation. It is. And frankly, it's better for DC, not just a greater, it's better for DC as a whole. Because this is just, even though it's a joke, it's it, the, the people posting this stuff is not going to cause just random passersby to go, Oh my God, Nightwing is saying he's a snack. I will never buy DC again. That's not how it works. Most people will dig in, poke at it, investigate it. The art in this panel looks fairly good. So uh, all this, I mean, I'm not saying this is the best marketing you could possibly have, 
but flipping out about it is definitely bad marketing. So lighten up. It, it's okay to make jokes about this. And perhaps this is something that Tom Taylor has kind of figured out because Taylor, <coughs> pardon me, posted this. Hey, Chuck, that's not the dialogue. Someone's photoshopped it for the usual outrage nonsense. Now, by the way, if I'm Tom, I would go, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't do the usual outrage nonsense. I would say somebody's photoshopped it and, you know, pretty cringe if you ask me. Or that, I just, I'd, I'd try and lighten it up. That's how I would do it. Anyway, he said, but I did want to say thank you so much for all you and Scott McDaniel did for Nightway. Bruno uh, Redondo and I were offered several books, some that would be seen as, quote, higher profile, but he and I wanted to put Nightwing back on the pedestal we believed he belonged on, largely because of a love for the character that came from your stories. We fortunately found a lot of success with Nightwing, critically and in sales, largely because of Bruno Redondo's incredible art, but none of this would have been possible without everything you and Scott McDaniel built. Thanks. Okay. Regardless of what you think about Tom Taylor, that's a classy response. Again, I, I wouldn't have even gone for the usual outrage nonsense. One you know, little, little note, editor note for that post, is one of the douchier things about comics is when the creators separate themselves from the fans. And they do it in lots of different ways, but when they like, let me talk to you creator to creator and get out of the usual outrage nonsense. I'm picking, and by the way, there was a great response from Tom Taylor, and, and no doubt about it. So this is a nit. But one of the things creators can do in general is try and avoid this perception that it's like me and my comic buddies are hanging out. Like like when people post, and there's some good people without naming names, people I like, they'll often post photos like, here's me and a bunch of other comic creators at the convention hanging out together. And, uh, and you know, this is truly the dream crew. And they only post photos of that, of them hanging out with other creators. Take a few minutes, just as a suggestion, to post some photos of you signing books for fans, shaking hands with fans, that kind of stuff. It helps. It's a good thing. It, it really does. Because too many photos of, of just you and, and other creators, it sets up this idea of we're a private club, you're outside the club. And so this idea of, of you know, oh, some people just did this for the usual outrage nonsense. By the way, the other piece of it is, um, and this hasn't been the case recently, as a lot of comic creators have gone to war with each other, but um, it is uh, one thing fans absolutely hate is when they do something, make a joke or, you know, say, you know, hey, Dan Slott, uh, how's that uh, story Christos Gage is writing for you? And Dan Slott's like, block. And then from behind the block, like, you're hateful big. I, I hate, you know, just, just really goes nuts about it. And then say one of the other writers makes a joke. This is something that actually happened about Gage. And Dan Slott's like, aha, yeah. Christos Gage is quite a talent and brushes it off. Same joke. People hate that shit. You know, just, just treat everybody the same, hopefully for the better. But anyway, sorry, I spent too much time on that because you know, all in all, that was a good response by Taylor. And frankly, that's the response everyone should have to this stuff. You know, I, it just with, with just poking fun, the, the panel didn't say something like, you know, let's burn all the, the, the LGBTQ community. It wasn't, it wasn't inciting violence. It was a joke. Such a joke that I actually thought part of it might have been real for a minute, but, but it, it was a joke. So just relax. Enjoy the joke. This is not the, the burning of the industry. The more we can laugh at each other, comics are meant to inspire. They're meant to, you know, make us think. They're meant to entertain. They're meant to do a lot of things. One of those things is make us laugh. And having community participation where people can laugh, it's a damn good thing. Anyway, that's what I think. I, I So good on Taylor. Lighten up. Uh, what's it? It, it? It's like there's too much Taylor Swift. What was the Taylor Swift song? You, got, you need to lighten up. You need to lighten up. Thanks. Yeah. I know a bunch of comic creators are all into Taylor Swift now all of a sudden. Um, and editors from, you know, failing bankrupt companies. Uh, <clears throat> but like, like Taylor would say, lighten up. And that's the only time I'm ever going to say something like that. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.